Okay, so today we're going to have a pretty simple episode because all I'm really going to do is change out this image here, right? See how it's actually part of the background? I didn't think it through when I created this line drawer and uh, line renderer, and it makes more sense to use a um, a, a, tech, a, a scaled and rotated sprite. Now, unfortunately, scaling and rotating sprites is an extremely annoying thing to do in Unity, and I was hoping to avoid it, but it looks like it's something we're going to have to do uh, and until someone tells me a better way to do it. So I've created this sprite here, and it's just a little line that's got a little bit of darkness at the edges so that we have uh, uh, something we can see. It's nothing particularly interesting. But we need to assign it to the menu camera's inventory so that we can draw it. Right now we have this line renderer prefab and line renderer active. We don't need that anymore. In fact, we don't need it so much that I'm going to delete the prefab. Um, there we go. And uh, so down here in the uh, click, we create this line renderer. We don't need to do that. Similarly here, we say, uh, in if, if dragging, then blah, 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 blah. We need to replace this with drawing the, uh, uh, the texture we've created. So let's go ahead and create a rect real quick. And the image we want is that, what did I call it? Drag line. <clears throat> All right, so now we hit tab, we go into craftable, and where is it? Well, I forgot to assign it. So we're going to assign it, because that obviously is something we need to do. Durr. Moments of brilliance. Moments of brilliance. There we are. And you can see that it is nothing like an arrow, so what I've got to do is I've got to make it track from whatever we clicked on to the position of the mouse. So the key to this is that we're going to have to use some scaling and rotating functions. And I've never actually done this before, so it's going to be interesting to give it a shot. But for starters, we're going to go ahead and uh, make it the right size. And the right size is going to be always the same size as the image, which I believe is 16 by 128. Um, sorry, 128 by 16. I can double check that by going back here, clicking on the line and taking a look, 128 by 16. Uh, but instead of putting it at 100, 100, we're going to put it at wherever the thing we clicked on is. And we happen to know what we clicked on because down here in click, we set it. Selected item equals items index. Um, now, unfortunately, that actually gives us the items here rather than the shown items. So we also need to make this, uh, rather than just telling us that we are dragging, we need to tell us what shown item we're dragging. Now, we could work backwards from items into shown items and try and figure out what it is, but it's actually easier, it's actually easier to make this not a Boolean, but instead um, a, a draggable item here, like so. And so when we click, we set that. Um, except I just realized we're passing in an index, and we need to be passing in. Uh, we currently have. I'm already dereferencing it, so I've got to go back here. And do you remember how we did this setup here? Because uh, when we're only showing a, a small number of shown items, then which shown item you click on doesn't map exactly to your inventory one-to-one. -one. So we have this dereferencing where you have to determine what exactly you've clicked on. Um, and I have to actually undereference that. <laughs> and so now this index is the index of the shown item that we clicked on. And in turn, we can simply map these like so. But that also means that we can say that this is equal to shown items index. And now we are saving both of these options. We are saving 
the selected item and the dragging. Uh, the selected item refers to the inventory item that's not actually in the world. It's just a, a data reference. And the dragging refers to the in-world physical object. And that's useful for us because our line requires us to go from that in-world physical object to wherever our mouse cursor is. So the first step to do that is to get a position. And we're going to do that by just saying factory screen pause equals camera dot world to screen point. Uh, and then, of course, the position we're looking for is the position of the item we just clicked on. So that would be dragging. Like so. And that means that here we can say screen pause dot x and screen pause dot y. And I have no idea whether or not y is going to be upside down or not. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, it's upside down. There we go. And that's dragging from the center of that object out just to the right. And what we actually want to do is rotate and scale the GUI matrix so that it points to our cursor. So the first thing we've got to do is determine uh, the, the position of our cursor on the screen, which we have, but it's inverted, as you might remember. And there's a couple of other details as well. Basically, what we need to do is we need to use uh, the GUI um, uh, utility to rotate. So we're going to save the current GUI state. And, uh, and then at the end, we're going to reassign it. But here in the middle, we're going to change that GUI matrix so that it's rotated and scaled properly. So one of the things we can do is GUI utility dot rotate around pivot. And we're going to rotate around screen pause dot x and screen pause dot y. Oh, do we just rotate around screen pause? Uh, hold on, I screwed this up. It's in, in the wrong order. So we need to get an angle, and we also need to get a vector 2 pivot point. So let's go ahead and put in the vector 2 pivot point. But we need to also have an angle here. Well, let's calculate out our angle, and we can do that by getting the delta up here. So. Um, Uh, you know what, it's not worth doing it like that. Let's just do it like this. But I have a feeling that these are actually upside down. In fact, I'm almost positive they're upside down, which means that we actually need to do That is really annoying. Well, whatever. I actually don't know whether angle needs to be multiplied by um, uh, whether it needs to be in. Uh, this is going to give us radians, I believe. And I'm not sure whether rotate around pivot takes radians or degrees. Uh, unfortunately, they don't bother to tell you. They just say angle. Uh, not very helpful. But let's go ahead and take a look. It looks like it is wrong. It actually looks like it's significantly wronger than I thought it would be. Probably because my Y got inverted funny. Uh, so it looks like we have to multiply angle by uh, ray to degree. There we are. Now that should give us the right scale of motion, but I have a feeling it'll still be uh, inverted. Let's take oop, let's take a look. Yep, so that's the right scale of motion, but as you can see, it's not correct. 
uh, it's not moving from the correct point to the correct point. Uh, it looks like it's exactly 180 degrees off, um, which would be fun. So let's go ahead and just add pi to this. I can't imagine that's right, though. No, it's not. There's still something wrong. Um, maybe a ten two isn't what I actually wanted. I'll take a look. I'll figure it out. All right. So the problem was that I was inverting one, and uh, I was inverting too many things. The y-axis got me again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, and I'm going to step through it to determine exactly what what y-axes need to be inverted and which y-axes don't. Here you can see I'm getting the screen position, which is just getting the exact physical coordinate as it's put on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two textures, one at the line where the, where, the, where the object should be, and one at the tip where the mouse should be, because I get the same thing here with the event current mouse position x and mouse position y. And I'm not going to draw this guy, so I'm only drawing two textures, one that should be exactly where the physical object is, and one that should be exactly where my mouse is. And you can see that the one for my mouse works fine, but the one for the object is inverted on the y-axis. So to put it in the same space, I definitely need to invert this by saying um, screen pause dot y equals screen dot y minus screen pause dot y. going on automatic there, sorry. All right, so now you can see that both of these are in the proper position, and the question is, can we get this one to point at this other one? Let's give that a look. So basically, let's, uh, uh, let's turn these off. We don't need to draw them anymore. We're going to get the dx and the dy exactly like this, but um, uh, the question is whether or not the angle is right. This is no longer needed. So let's go ahead and just see whether or not we fixed it by just double checking all of our y-axis inversions and making sure they were right. All right, so you can see that the x is opposite, but the y is correct. So it's tracking y properly, but it's not tracking the x properly. It's 180 degrees off. That's um, because I used negative angle. I forgot to fix that. Let's try that again. All right, so now you can see that it's completely wrong. It's uh, it's 180 degrees off, which is actually what I fixed before, as you might remember. And I think that's because I need to actually do it. I think I've got these just backwards. Yeah, there we go. So now it's pointing correctly, and we've got it all set up, except for we need to scale it so that when it points towards the arrow, it actually stretches to the correct length. And the way to do that is to get the actual uh, length of the two uh, of these two points, how far apart they are, that is, which is easy enough. Um, we happen to have the screen pause at, and the mouse, but um, that means there's no but involved. That means that we can simply uh, get the delta. Like so. Maybe it might be a capital M. Let's double check. And then down here, when we do this rotate around pivot, we can also do a scale. Although I'm not sure which order to do them in. It might be that I'm screwing this up a little bit. We'll find out. Scale around pivot. That'll work. Uh, so we need a vector 2 scale, and we're only going to be scaling on the x component. So new vector 2 scale comma 1. Not scale mode, delta. Sorry, delta comma 1 and the pivot point will be the same pivot point. So let's go ahead and create this pivot point as a pivot point. All 
All right, so to put in some comments to make this more legible, Don't need this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see whether or not that works. Do I have a vector 2 that's called the same thing? Screen pause is a vector 3 and event current mouse position is a vector 3. Oh, oh, this is a vector 2. Okay, that's not biggie. We'll just use pivot. I didn't realize the mouse position was a vector 2. Of course it is. I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry about that. Hmm. All right, so you can see that it's definitely not scaling correctly. Uh, there's something very silly going on, and I think it's because we have the scaling and the rotating in the wrong order, but let's find out. And I knew this was going to be a whole episode, which is why I dedicated a whole episode to it. So this is actually worrying me because it's not actually scaling around the pivot like it should be. It's scaling arbitrarily, which implies that I've gotten something very wrong. Um, and similarly, I've just realized that our delta needs to be um, divided by the width of our line rectangle. So. All right, so it's mostly right. It, it looks like it's about half, so let's... Uh, not sure why we would need to do that, but let's just see whether or not it works. All right, so there we go. And there you can see that we now have a line. Now, the, one of the issues we've got here is that the line doesn't isn't perfect. Um, it scales... Uh, it, it, first off, it's a little bit off. As you can see, it actually happens at the corner of the image rather than... Um, where it should be. And that should be a matter of just simply moving it up slightly. But a bigger problem is that it doesn't actually scale perfectly to touch the mouse. And instead it's like a kind of an almost best guess sort of thing, which is a really awkward way to do it. And that implies that I've done something wrong here without realizing it. Um, and this is what I've done wrong. I divided by the line wrangle dot line rectangle.x instead of the line rectangle.width. There we are, much better. So now let's go ahead and move it up so that this is in the middle of it rather than in the corner of it. And uh, that means that we'll just take this line rectangle and like so. Oh, that's the wrong direction. There we go. And there you go. Now we have an arrow. And that's all I'm going to do in this episode. I'm going to make this, um, I guess I'll make this available for download, although it's not really, you know what, I'm going to wait until next episode to make it available for download because this is really just very, very basic. Um, I'm sorry, it has, we haven't made any significant changes. Next episode we're actually going to be dropping stuff here, and that'll be valuable. But this is not very valuable, and in fact it's broken as it currently stands, so I'm not going to bother. Um, Anyhow, sorry about this episode being a little bit nitpicky. We spent the entire episode trying to make a line trace a mouse, uh, which is an annoying thing to do in Unity.